Hello Internet, Adopted Mike here, and this is a little bit of a unique video here for me. I mean, you can see we're probably going to do a build here with all of these parts in front of me, but the unique part about it is I actually purchased these parts over a six to eight week period, and I did this to kind of maximize how far my dollars would go grabbing things on sale and shell shocker deals at Newegg or Tiger Direct flyers, Newegg flyers again, Amazon sales. I just kind of watched things, see how things were tracking and trending, checked out for some mail-in rebates, stuff like that. And I basically put together these parts over that said six to eight week period there and uh, you know did my mail-in rebates and everything. So basically now I have all the parts to do this mid-range gaming system and I feel like I got a really great dollar or bang for my buck if you will so without further ado let's get into it and we'll go piece by piece and I'll show you what I got so for the case I chose the Rosewell FB03 as you can see here this is a full-size ATX uh, case it's got three five and a quarter bays one three and a half inch bay you know your standard power a couple USB some headphone ports up there you know nothing to write home about uh, we've got a black design a little bit of venting there in the back we've got as you can see the uh, ATX standard will fit just nicely in here we've got some included fans as well top mounted power supply you know not ideal but like I said you know it's not a bad case and I got this uh, for $25 and that uh, includes shipping. So for the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte 78LMT-USB3. This is a pretty solid motherboard as you can see we have ultra durable 4 and so you know it's not Gigabyte's low end model. I did an unboxing and quick review in another video you can check that out if you wish but it's got a lot of it's got a lot of pretty good features. I mean, we've got USB 3.0, we've got AM3 Plus socket ready, so we can do the FX processor, so we can do the, the quad, the 6, or the 8 core processor. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty good on that end. We've got the glass fabric PCB. I mean, for the price I paid for this, I think I did really, really awesome. The only thing it doesn't have that it could have is SATA 6 gigabit a second. Uh, instead, it just has SATA 3 gigabit a second but my build is with the hard drive so we wouldn't even realize that anyway without using the SSD but for forty nine dollars I think I got a hell of a steal and if you want to go through the overview of the board uh, I definitely did an unboxing like I said you can check that out for the processor I went with the AMD FX 4150 this is the 125 watt TDP version of the FX uh, quad cores I picked this up at Tiger Direct. It's just the tray pack CPU, but uh, it's still, you know, got the one year warranty and it's definitely ready to rock and roll. Quad cores is still very respectable for gaming. And it also came with this particular uh, CPU cooler, being that there's not one obviously included. We've got the TR2R1 from Thermaltake. Uh, pretty good. I've used this one in the past. It's not great being it's all aluminum, but it does a hell of a lot better job and it's a hell of a lot quieter than the stock FX cooler that comes with uh, any of the FX processors. So we've got that and that and I picked these both up for $69.99 so we'll call that $70 for that. So I think that was a, uh, a very good deal there. I felt really good about that. For the power supply, I picked up the Corsair CX500M. We got 80 plus bronze. It's a three-year warranty. It's 500 watts, semi-modular. It's got a lot of what I was looking for, especially in the price. Got it for 30 bucks. I could not complain about that at all for a semi-modular 500 watt power supply. Should help keep the cabling a little cleaner. Uh, I've used, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of these in computer builds. And I think I've, I, I know I've only had one fail, and it failed right off the bat, so I was able to get an RMA in and get, and get a new one right away. So it wasn't like it had to wait, you know, a month or six months before and then have all the trouble of that. But heck, no, nope, I love the Corsair power supplies, and for 30 bucks, I think I did good with this one. So for the GPU, I went with a little older of one, but still 
fairly powerful. I've got the HD7850 here, a AMD card. Uh, it's by Power Color, not a super well-known brand, you know what I mean? It's but um, I've used these cards before in the past, and I've had great luck with them. And I got the two gigabyte version. Picked this one up for 105 bucks after mail-in rebate. I don't think I, uh, you know, did wrong with that for sure, because this is still a fairly decent card for 1080p gaming, which is kind of what I'm designing the system for anyway. Is kind of a budget 1080p build. So for the RAM, I picked up 8 gigabytes from uh, the team group. This is their Zeus line. Uh, they call it an overclocking memory module. Um, but basically here, it's rated at 1600 megahertz, which I wouldn't really call, you know, big overclocking. But uh, we've got some decent timings here with CL9 at 1.5 volts. I picked this up for $62. Uh, which isn't great, but it's not bad for 8 gigs, and I think 8 gigs is still the sweet spot, so I feel pretty good about that. And now for the drives. For storage, I picked up a 320 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. This is a recertified drive. I paid 30 bucks for it. I felt, you know, I was kind of, eh, about a recertified drive, but... We'll check it out and see what happens with it. I know I could have probably got a one terabyte for like 60 bucks, but I just was kind of looking for price point at this point. So we'll see how this recertified 320 goes. I really didn't need a lot of storage for this particular build anyway. One terabyte was probably a little overkill and I was trying to get in under a certain price point because I wanted to keep it under $400 for the parts itself. So I ended up with this and like I said, just cross my finger and see where we come out. And then for DVD, I picked up, you know, just a cheap little rewritable DVD recorder. Uh, I don't even recall I think I, uh, I don't recall the brand on it but uh, let's see here oh it's a light on but I paid 15 bucks for it and last but not least we've got Windows 7 home premium 64-bit still in my opinion uh, a very good operating system I'm not quite ready to switch over to the 8 or the 8.1 I'm still in love with Windows 7 and I will be for a, at least a little while longer so I went with Windows 7 and I paid $80 for this so here's one last look at all the parts stacked up before I tear into them and put it all together Again, we ended up at $471, including the Windows license of 80 So anybody who already has Windows or doesn't need the license would end up at $391, which I think is, I think I did pretty good for what I'm going to actually get out of it. I think I'll have a solid little uh, medium kind of range gaming build here. So I'm going to go ahead and slap it all together, and through the magic of editing, it's only going to seem like seconds to you guys, and we will see how it all comes out. So unfortunately, I made the mistake of deleting all of the footage and files and everything from that point on. All I can say is uh, the build went together great. I had no problems with it. It performed pretty well for what it was. I, was, uh, I did sell it to the customer before I realized that I deleted all the files. They've been very happy with it. It's probably been a couple of weeks since I did the build anyway. So unfortunately I can't show how it turned out other than you have to take my word for it I guess. But um, I was real happy with it. The customer was real happy with it like I said. I ended up, uh, usually when I do a build I charge 10% of the parts cost. So it pushed it to 500 something. I can't exactly be, uh, remember the amount. But that was real good for the customer. It worked out good for me. They're really happy with it, haven't had any problems. Um, so, I mean, as far as doing something like this, it's a decent idea if you time it right, but I certainly wouldn't recommend like taking two months to do this as parts kind of depreciate and stuff like that. Plus, if you ended up with a part that didn't work and you waited too long, you may fall outside of like a return policy for the, the, the supplier or the vendor of the uh, piece of hardware. So other than that, uh, I would call this a success other than the fact that I don't have the video files to uh, prove it. But um, anyway, if you like this video and it helped you out, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give me the thumbs down and let me know in the comment section below what you thought of my budget build. And as always, thank you for watching.